Hello there students, my name is James, I'm going to take you through this uh, student demo, hopefully it's going to be useful for you, so let's get started straight away, okay, I'll share my screen with you, you should still be able to see me in the corner all being well, so here we are, we're on the everlearner.com, this is the platform here, this is what you need to be sort of getting familiar uh, with, now then, of course, the first thing you guys have to do is you need to log in. So you log in here via your account. If I go to here, this actually got my own uh, login here, but I'm going to override this and I'm going to put in my login details and I'm going to log in here. OK, so here, here's my login details. I log in nice and successfully like that. And I become Fleur. You see here, it's going to save the password for me. But what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to just quickly log out of here and show you what you'd need to do if you've forgotten your password. OK, so, for example, let's say that I've come to the website, I'm meant to be doing my homework. And you know what? I just can't remember my password. I go to your account. I go, oh, I don't remember it. And I go, forgot password. I put my email address into here. In this case, it's this one here. I hit, I hit reset and I've got a, now got an email in my inbox, which is allowing me to reset my password that way. That is all you have to do. So with the best one in the world, uh, you students, if your teacher sets you homework, you've got to do it. And it's as simple as that. Teachers out there, um, they can log in, don't worry. Now then, let's go back to the platform here and actually let's, let's log in again, okay? So I'm going to go into my account. I'm going to log in as this user. I'm going to log in with dum 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 dum. There we go. We're now logged in as a student. You see up here, my name's Fleur. It's not actually my name's James, but um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to be Fleur, Fleur Delacour. And I'm going to take you through uh, some of these processes, okay? So, first things first, here I am. I'm logged into this platform, the Everland.com. And I'm going to go through quite a few details with you. All this stuff here, don't worry about that for now. I'm going to come back to that at the very, very end, okay? For now, we want to sort of ask the question, well, how do I get to my learning? How do I get to go and do something? And the way I do that is I hit my courses up here. So I've got to go to my courses. Now, Fleur is a bit of an unusual case. She's studying absolutely every course on the platform. You won't have all of these choices down here. You might have one or two courses that are here. So, for example, if I imagine maybe you are a, let's say, you are a GCSE PE student with OCR exam board, this is what you would see. You wouldn't need to do these filters, but this is what it would look like. And here's my course, and I click study now. I'm now into my course page. The entire course and qualification is laid out in front of me. Okay, so here we go. Let's familiarize. Little description at the top. I've got the chapter title for chapter one. I've got a chapter title for chapter two, for chapter three, and so on. Let's just pause on chapter three here for a second. Of course, it goes all the way down to the end of the course. You'll see here inside chapter three, I've got one topic two topics and I've got this kind of weird yellow blob and I'll come back to this bit in a second okay now I'm going to imagine that I'm interested in studying the respiratory system I click into here and inside the respiratory system here I've got one two three four lessons okay but one two three four lessons now those four lessons are the exact lessons of your course of your qualification in this case I'm showing it with OCR GCSEP but this could be an A level it could be a BTEC it could be a Cambridge National now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this lesson here and I'm going to hit resume lesson just notice if I'd never watched any of this before it says start learning okay it also says re-watch if you've watched the whole thing but I'm going to resume this lesson and I come into this tutorial space now here is a video you'll see it's seven minutes 57 long so roughly eight minutes long also notice down this right hand side all of my other lessons are available via a single click so for example if i wanted to click on long-term effects of exercise i could click there and here's the tutorial in this case six minutes worth of that particular piece of teaching but you know what i'm interested in my lung volumes lesson i'm going to go back there now let's have a look here it says on lung volumes here that 7 minutes 57, and it says previously, I've watched 67% of this video. So in a different sitting before today when I'm recording this, I've watched this some other period of time, right? Now, I'm going to hit play and pause before we listen to that for a second. Notice my 67%. And then notice, guys, this weird grey bar down the bottom here. There are, that grey bar, of those grey blocks with the gaps, is the 67% that I've watched. So in other words, we are tracking the milliseconds of this video. Can you see, for example, that Flo before has watched this block but missed a bit, watched this block but missed a bit. We are tracking that. Now, I'm actually going to unplug my headphones for this for a second. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at this. Let me just look. I want you to be able to hear this video for a second. Hopefully, you can still hear me okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press let's play. talk about one volume that was louder than i expected here i'm going to immediately 
introduce you to an equation, some terminology. So just go with this, even if you're not comfortable. Sort of comfortable. Now, I'm not going to ask you to watch this whole video, but, but from here, we get to here, from here, we get to here, from here, we get to here. Ant, then we get to here, we're sketching out the axes in this case, we get to here. Into and out of that mouthpiece on that. Now, I want to prove a point to you guys. I want you to watch as I click to here. I've drawn all this curve in, but notice, let me just turn that down. Notice, guys, underneath my video, this gray block is filling in. If I click to here, this gray block, this tracking will track me from underneath this video. It's tracking me on those specific parts of the video. Notice I'm on 71%. But if I re-watch this bit again, I'll get no more credit for this because I've previously watched this bit. I only get credit for unique new viewing. Okay. Now, importantly, guys, if I'm at the start of the video and I try and drag it to here, let's say, I try and drag it to here, this part here, you'll see that in due course, it'll pick me up tracking, oops, but at that, at that specific moment, I didn't mean to set it to uh, SD there. Um, just bear with me a second. I wasn't meaning to do Let's that. Let's talk about lung volumes. In order to get so the point I want to tell you about the tracking, guys, is you can't drag it and your teacher think you've got 100%. Also, I know you'll be really delighted to hear this message. If you're watching one of our videos and you open another app or you 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 know you open another Chrome window or anything, you open a game on your um, on your device or you split screen on your mobile and you have the Everlearner and I don't know Instagram open on your on your mobile, for example, our video will stop immediately. The other thing, guys, is if you play our video and then you guys kind of wander off and go and have your dinner or make a cup of tea or whatever it happens to be, after a short period of time of inactivity, our video will close. Now, what that means in reality, guys, is you absolutely have to watch that video to be credited for watching the video. You can't get around that. So I hope you guys out there see that as the good news it is. What that means in reality is that when you try students your teacher knows that you're trying. And that's a good thing, right? You don't need to hope your teacher notice that you're trying. They're going to know that you're trying because you've put that effort in and that data and that tracking is going to be available to them. So I hope that is a good piece of news for you. Now, before we move off the tutorials, I want to show you something really critical. I see this is a really important point, guys. Let's, uh, let's say that I'm at this point in the video here and it's just taking... It's just teaching me that tidal volume is about 500 milliliters, right? Well, where do I record that? Where do I put that information? Well, up at the top here, guys, we've got content notes, content notes, content notes. Now, I'm just wondering if my face might be covering up notes on the recording, but up here in the top right, just here is the notes tab. And I can write in here, tidal volume at rest is 500 milliliters on average. Okay, so I'm going to put that note in there. Now, look where my video playhead is, guys. I hit my note. Bang. That note goes there. Maybe I'm here in the video. I'm simply going to put here the Y axis is the vertical axis. I know you guys know this, right? But I just put this in. There's my video playhead. Bang. That note goes into there. And guys, these notes are all interactive. So if I click them... If I click them, I can go and I can look at those particular moments, the slithers of teaching. And I should be really, really clear here for you guys. You can make as many notes as you like. Your teacher cannot log in and see your notes on the platform, but that allows you to make them however you want to make them. But here's my recommendation as an experienced teacher to you guys, right? When you're watching the videos, try to make key linguistic anchors onto the teaching definitions criteria, processes, characteristics, descriptors, uh, examples. It could be a formula. It could be an evaluation point, a strength, a weakness. Build these into your notes. It will serve you well in just a few moments time. Now, let's go back to the platform. Let's imagine for a second that you have just watched this entire lung volumes lesson. We've watched a lot of it. Let's imagine you've made tons of notes, which we kind of have, okay? What might we do next? Well, I'm gonna go back to the course. I'm gonna go back to that lesson, guys, and have a look here. I'm gonna to go to practice mode, practice. Now look what practice tells me. Students, no pressure, take your time, use your notes, learning, not testing. So guys, I wanna be clear to you students here, 
your teachers cannot see you answer in here, okay? This is for you to engage with some questioning before you do the teacher's test, okay? This is where you get to practice your knowledge before it's being measured, and hopefully you're gonna see that as a positive thing. So I go into practice mode, and look what I get, guys. I get a question. Da -da 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 -da. It's asking me about minute ventilation, One point six. Right, I'm gonna say, I think the answer is 12, okay, 12. Now, I've got a note here, Notice that my notes are available here. Notice that I'm not time restricted. I've got a note here, which is about breathing rate might be in the region of 12 per minute. So what I'm gonna click on this note, it's gonna open a new tab and take me to that moment of teaching. So I go, yeah, I think it's 12. By the way, I haven't read the questions. So I may well be wrong, but ah, oh, damn, I was wrong. It goes up to 25 breaths per minute in this case. So it's not that it was asking me about resting, during exercise, it was asking me about, and I obviously for that reason, I got it wrong. This time, which of the following terms is the number of breaths taken in a minute? Well, I think that's breathing rate. There's my answer, there's my feedback. Notice there's no time restriction. What is missing from the image? I think that one is breathing. Put that in, there's my answer, there's my feedback. Let's have a look at this one. Look carefully at the spirometer trace. I click on it, okay, I've looked at it carefully. Which of the following is the correct calculation to work out minute ventilation? Now I look at it, dum, 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 dum. I think it is this one here, and I'm gonna put my answer in. There's my feedback there. Now I wanna to stress to you guys about practice mode. You can take as many questions as you like. There's a lot of questions in there. The teacher cannot see your scores, but the teacher knows how long you've spent in practice mode. So if you go and do the test badly that they set you say, you struggle on their test and you haven't done practice mode, they might have some questions for you on that one. Use practice mode when you need to prepare yourself for something challenging. Now, I could now switch to test mode simply by clicking this button here. But you know what? I'm gonna do test mode on a different lesson just to show you a bit of variety. So I'm gonna exit my practice is gonna take me back to the lesson. I'm gonna do the first lesson of the course, the skeleton, and this time I'm gonna do a test, okay? So here's the test. In test mode, we're gonna record your score. Report it in your dashboard. Your teacher can see it too, are you ready? Yes. So look what I've got here, guys. I've got my timer is now counting me down. I'm now time restricted. My notes have disappeared. I'm a series of flat bones that provide protection for the lungs and heart. What am I series? So it's got to be the ribs. There's my answer. There's my feedback. Notice here, guys, that when you put your feedback in, the timer stops. Have a look at this one. It basically asked me what bone is that? I think that might be a tibia. So I'm gonna put in here tibia. Put my answer in, there's my feedback. My timer stops. This one, I'm looking at this. That's very elbow-ish, in my opinion. I'm gonna say, right, there may be two, uh, there may be more than one bone. So I'm gonna say here, radius and humerus. There we go. There's my answer, there's my feedback. This one, I'm just gonna start guessing some stuff now. There's my answer. There's my incorrect answer feedback. Again, my timer stops. Now you might have noticed there guys in test mode, there's different amount of times per question. Okay, we've got a 30 second question, a 45 second question and a 60 second question. Of course, the one for 60 seconds is a bit harder or you've got more to do. Okay, now every time you sit a test, you get an equal difficulty rating for that batch of questions. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many times you go in there, but here's test mode in a nutshell. As many questions as you want to do, lots and lots of questions. We're tracking this so your teacher can see your performance. Time restriction per question, no notes available. That's what test mode is. Now, real critical point, folks. We are not giving the average scores to your teacher. So if you do on the skeleton here, if you do 100 answers on the skeleton over, I don't know, over a, a year's period, we're not giving your teacher the average score or you the average score. We're giving you your live test score. This is the quality of your last 12 answer students. Your last 12 answers. So here's my message to you kids out there. Sorry to use the word kids, teenagers, young people, students, learners, whatever. Here's my message to you. You guys out there, I'm saying to you now, you're only as good as your last 12. So if you smash a test one day and then your teacher sets you a batch of questions to do the next day and you get them all wrong, you're going to find yourself here. But here's the beauty of it. If you've got a low test score, you're a bit of studying and 12 good answers away from being here. So don't despair. If your score's low, low, 12 answers and you're here, that guys is powerful. That is a good thing. You can turn it around quickly with a bit of study, bit of intervention, bit of impact, and you're there. Now, let's go back in. We're almost there, folks. Let's go back in. I'm gonna exit the test here. 
And I want to go back to the course. I'll come to all the numbers in a second, but I'm going to go back to the course here. You see how the course has got these yellow blobby things in them. I'm going to do yellow blobby thing number three. Click here. It's called a checkpoint. Now, in this checkpoint, I've got 20 questions. I've got 15 minutes. It's telling me good luck. And it's going to ask me about this stuff here. It's not going to ask me about this or this, that's a different checkpoint. So is this, this is a different checkpoint somewhere else. But notice when I go into the checkpoint, look what I get here. Different environment now. I'm now being time restricted for the entire test, 15 minutes counting down as a whole. I'm on number one of 20. Match the plane with the correct description. Okay, I'll do my best. I'm not reading, so please forgive me. I'm gonna go dump, dump, dump. Okay, let me see if I got that. Uh, I tell you what, I tell you what, I might have got that right. But the point is, guys, have a look at this. I'm going to hit next question. Are you ready for the feedback? Well, you know what? There wasn't any. This one, I look at the image. I'm going to go, right, mechanical disadvantage. This one, I look at this lever, and I'm going to go, right, mechanical advantage. This one, I'm going to go, this is, uh, this is comparing two different levers. I'm going to go here and here. I'm not reading, okay, folks, so please just bear with me. This one, I'm dragging things in. What I'm going to write is going to be a load of old guff because I'm not actually taking it and reading it through, but I'm gonna put that in there, that in there, that in there, totally wrong, I'm sure. No feedback. This one, it looks to me like my uh, effort is missing, so I'm gonna put effort. Anyway, I'll just flick through a bunch of questions, so I've got roughly, um, I've got enough to say, look, I've even, at least I've attempted this. I'll stop there, because this is a really tough, long question. But if you notice here, guys, I've done nine of my 20 questions. You, of course, would do all 20. I submit my checkpoint. It doesn't want me to, because I haven't finished. You will never do this, of course. Submit anyway. I've done one minute of activity. Remember, your teacher can see that, students. If you quickly skip through the questions, your teacher's going to know that you spent a minute on it. I did nine of 20 questions. I got a quarter of the marks correct, which for guesswork, I want to say is actually all right. But now, guys, I get my feedback. So there's the review of my answer. Here's the review of my answer. Here's the review and so on. So I can get my feedback as I go through these. Okay, that one was obviously horridly wrong. You'll see up here that my, my correct answers, my best answers in a row were three, uh, incorrect answers in a row one, all my time, where this particular question came from, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we've layered the website with these tutorials and note taking to build your knowledge, guys. Practice mode, student only, it's just for you. And what you can do in there, of course, is you can engage with some content without judgment. Test mode, we're tracking you lesson by lesson by lesson. Checkpoint mode, end of unit summary test. Now, here's the great news for all your students. Your teachers can set you homework or classwork or um, pre-lesson work, you know, prep work on the platform, all right? So if I go back to the platform now, you see you've got this button up here that says assignments, okay? So if I click into assignments, have a look what I've got in here. On my BTEC Sport course, I've got a mixed test, which I've got one hour left to do. On Edexcel, I've got one day left to do. So I'm going to go into this one here, and look what it tells me. It's a BTEC Sport. I must get 80% minimum. Repeat until I achieve it if stuck practice mode. So my teacher has set this for me. So my teacher's decided I have to do this test. Let's have a look. I get this question, and again, I'm dragging things in. I'm not going to be reading properly. Bang. This one, I got wrong, I move on. This one, I'm gonna say speed. I was wrong, it should have been aerobic endurance. This one, dynamic and static. Now this homework is now tracking and being reported to my teacher. My teacher has set this for me and this is now tracking and reporting for me as I go through, okay? So I'm gonna say that this one is beats per minute, for example, okay, there's my answer. There's my feedback. Now guys, really important here, the assignments that the teacher sets you are tracked and reported back to your teacher, okay? So there's no way that you can avoid those. You have to do them. Just as a little bit of a hint for you, if you ever wanna see what's kind of most recent on the website, okay, obviously you can go to assignments, but have a look at notifications on here. Notifications are where you can go, and you see here, I've got lots of notifications about courses, but you see here, for example, on the 11th of November, I was set to watch two tongue, two lung lessons. I was set to, watch, to do a checkpoint. My teacher set me these tasks. So every time your teacher sets you a task, they're in here and available for you to, to do. Also, just to let you know, if you ever wanna look at assignments you've done in the past, look, I, I'm a very naughty student. I keep missing my homework. 
okay? But every assignment look completed 2% on this one, completed 1%. This is just a demo account, of course. But the point is there, guys, is that that's all in there for you. So your teachers set you the tasks, the tasks are in here. And, I, and just to be, make you aware, the teachers can set you to watch things, to answer tests, to do checkpoint and to write exam answers. Oh dear, that doesn't sound good, does it? But that's what the teacher can set you to do. And everything about that is tracked by. So really important to stress this. If you, if the teacher sets you an assignment and you don't do it, there's no way you can pull the wool over there. I know you're not that kind of student, right? You're not gonna do that, but there's no way that you can pull the wool over the teacher's eyes. They're gonna know categorically what you did, when you did it, how much of it you did, the score you got. They're gonna know that. Okay. So of course they're going to want to talk to you about that. Hey, well done. That's a great effort. You had three goes to get to 80%. Really proud of you. Fantastic. Last thing on assignments. If your teacher sets you a test or a batch of questions, right? And they say that you have to get 70% or 80% or 60% or whatever. And let's say it takes you three goes to get to that score. You know, you get 10 questions. You've got to get to 80%. You've got to get eight out of 10. Each time you do that 10 questions, the test is different each of those three times. It's really important to stress that. Now, finally, guys, and this will be much easier for you because you'll have fewer uh, things to, to sort of filter through. But this dashboard should be really powerful for you. So just bear in mind that Fleur's enrolled for tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of courses. OK, so you guys will not have all of this choice. But if I go to my PE lessons and I go to my live data, this is I'm getting all of these views because Fleur's in like tons of groups. But what you will see in your group, guys, is you will see this. OK, so Fleur will know how her performance is going across the entire course. So for example, if Fleur wants to look at the very first lesson of the course, she can go there. This is what it's telling her. Look, Fleur has done 6% of the video. That's what she's watched. Not much, right? She's done 40 seconds in practice mode. Again, not much. The teacher might want to talk to you about this. She's got 33% score on her live test score and she's done 52 seconds of testing, okay? So clearly more work needs to be done on this lesson. But the point I wanna to make to you guys is you are gonna know that, your teacher is gonna know that too. What about if we put a different lesson in there? Let's put this one and this one. Look, there's the first three lessons that the student has done. You're gonna have that data and you're gonna know. Now let's put everything back in. When you do your tech checkpoints, guys, here's all the Fleur's checkpoint attempts. Remember checkpoints were the yellow blobs, the end of unit tests. So you see here, I've done checkpoint one five times. There's my five attempts. I might want to look at attempt two, which is my best score. And it's stored in there for you. Look, one minute, 20, nine uh, questions out of 30 she did. She got 17%. And she can go through her answers one by one by one. Okay, so there, all those checkpoints are stored for you. And then finally, guys, and this might look really bad for Fleur, your assignment mark book is every homework you've ever been set. And now obviously Fleur is not looking like a very good student here, right? She tends not to do her homework. But the point is, guys, that if you, for your assignments here, you see here that for the assignments, this is now presenting, this is now presenting as um, as every task that Fleur has ever been set, okay? So you can track your homework record without having to do anything. Of course, your teacher can see this too. So that's what we've built in the platform. We really hope it's gonna be useful for you. Now, I happen to be recording this tutorial in November, actually in a lockdown, national November 2020, actually in a lockdown. That's why I'm at home today, because we're in that second lockdown. Who knows what the future is to bring on this COVID stuff. Um, hopefully by the time you watch this, we're out of it and it's like a, a better place to be, right? But the point I would make, guys, is this one. Whether you're in the classroom, you're doing it for homework, whether you're self-isolating, whether it's the night before your exam, the night before your mock, you're reviewing your mock and you're trying to improve those things that you found out you weren't very good at, this is going to get you there. Okay, so really try and use this in the best way possible. Try and make the most of it. Well, the, I think the biggest tip I would give to students is go into your dashboard, see the areas that you're a bit low on and up them. Okay, bring them up to that lesson, bring them up to that lesson. And this is the thing, guys, and I think this is really important for students to hear. I hope it's good news. When you log in, try, put time and effort in, your teacher is going to know that. They're going to know it categorically. Now, that means two things. That means that every time you try, you get credit. That's wonderful, right? You put some effort in, your teacher notices. Secondly, that if you feel like avoiding or evading, that's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So if you're ever like, oh, I, you know, if you have a, if you have a sort of feeling a bit tired, it's like, oh, you know, I don't feel like doing my homework today. Well, that's, I can't influence that. But just know for a fact 
that your teacher is going to be fully aware that you didn't do it. Okay, and there's no way that you can make an excuse around that. And obviously, if there's a reason you've been poorly, that your teacher's going to understand, of course. But you take my point, guys. The data is accurate. There's nothing being missed. There's nothing that's accidental. That's completely objective. So work hard, put time in, keep going. You're only as good as your last 12. Always do your assignments. Keep in that dashboard. Look at the, the diagnostics we're telling you, and you will do great. Anyway, there's my attempt at some kind of motivational finish um, in this session. I hope it's been useful for you. My name's James. I'm going to wish you uh, the very best. I hope this has been good. That has been embarrassing, wasn't it? My kids would have been really embarrassed about that. <laughs>